You can see the ice floating down the Snake River. It's a balmy two degrees, which means it's about 15 to 17 degrees warmer than my last few runs. We're post storm, we got a fresh two feet of snow and it should be epic running out on Henry Road today. And today we're gonna get into running and fasting. We're gonna dive into the why and the how. So let's go. Last time I was out here, we saw a golden eagle and we've got a bald eagle on this. Sitting on that perch. It's right there. He's just kind of hanging out, doing some fishing this morning. Anyway, you can see our fresh new snow and I'm getting my feet all wet. Um, but on my last call for your questions on the channel, I got a great question from Carl. Carl's question was, what are the benefits of fasting while you run? And we're going to dive into this today, but I feel like the best way to cover this subject is to do it ongoing while I'm out doing some of my fasted runs, talking about the pros and cons. I've experimented with fasting for over seven years now with a good focus, but then also reflecting back, I've kind of been doing it the last 30 years, not ne necessarily knowing that I was kind of experimenting with it, um, if that makes sense. So we're gonna dive into it today. We're gonna talk about my experiences and my experiences only and some of the experiences I have with my athletes. So if you follow along with the channel pretty consistently, I'm going to start infusing some of what I'm doing with my fasting out of my runs. Some videos it might be the focus, where other videos there might be another training and coaching focus where I'm just kind of talking a little bit about what I'm doing fasting that day. It is just so nice right now. Running in the sun, a little vitamin D, but it looks like we got a kill up here. Let's see. Yep. That, uh, that's just the fur outer coating. So I wonder if we got any. It's dog tracks. A lot of times a kill like this is from a mountain lion. And got a lot of tracks around here. But I'm not seeing any mountain lion. And again, what tends to happen after so much snow that a lot of times the game come down to the road because it's easier to travel and then we get a lot of more kill especially from mountain lions closer to roads because again it, it's easier for them to hunt and that's that's where the game are because it's easier for them to walk on the road than the deep snow so my purpose for my long-term experiment with fasting is twofold one is run performance and secondly and just as equally health benefits and we'll dive into that maybe in another video today i want to want to just talk about how you might want to start experimenting with fasting on your own and how it relates to run performance so one of the reasons i i fast for my running is to create what i call metabolically flexibility meaning my body becomes efficient, burning fat as fuel and carbohydrates as fuel. And this is what's missed in a lot of dogma that's out there with diets and everything is we need to be able to burn both fuels very, very efficiently. So the idea being that running fasted 
you have no carbohydrate reserves in store within your body to be called upon and used. And through the fasted run, you're calling on your fat reserves, your fatty acid metabolism to fuel your run. And this is a process. And how is this different, say, than a Moffatone effect where you're going out in zone two running? Well, if you're not fasted, you still have carbohydrates in your body that regardless of the effort that we're putting in, we're still burning those carbohydrates. And that percentage varies based on your efficiency and your intensity, but your body is still using carbohydrates versus fasted when there's no carbohydrate reserves to call upon. That is the difference. So what am I doing today? I am out for a two hour run. It, I started my run at 10 a.m. My last meal the night before was at 6 p.m. Therefore, I'm 16 hours fasted when I started my run, which will put me into 18 hours with my two hour run. No food for 16 hours. What I also do is keep the effort very, very easy, gear one, zone one, and I primarily use wattage to keep myself in my appropriate level of effort because when it's this cold, sometimes heart rate's really low. And especially when you're fasted, early on when you're not adapted to fasting, your heart rate can be super low. So I found wattage is usually black and white and a little bit more of a, a parameter to measure things for me. Uh, but again, when it's this cold, slow conditions, I, I really don't have to monitor my effort much. It's just super easy. What I also do, runs like this, is the times when I'm running most minimal. I'm using my zero shoes, Mesa Trail, and this allows every step to be a form of strength training. So why do you need this fat burning efficiency? Well, it allows you to go longer using fat as fuel. It also requires less fueling during your long runs or races. So now there's a performance gains there. Anytime you do take in um, calories, I found that less calories actually provides a better boost in performance because your body's not used to having it as much. So there's actually a performance enhancement there with less calories. So you don't have a lot of the stomach issues that we might be susceptible to on our long runs and long races. And I mentioned that I'm keeping my run very easy. I'm also keeping it very flat because one of the cons of fasting across the board is that you lo do lose some power, the ability to run fast. And where it becomes important for me is doing a lot of vertical uphill climbing in the mountains. I lose power, I lose strength. So I found that I need to fuel for those types of runs, which then leads me to how I periodize fasting. It's early season, it's February. Okay, I'm doing a lot of base miles, a lot of strength runs, a lot of minimal running, okay? And so it's, it's a lot of easy stuff coinciding with my hill sprints and other faster running where now I can do a lot of fasting because overall the effort's easy because of the terrain I'm running, okay? And then as I start, as the, as the melt out starts and I'm able to get higher and higher, the trails open, late spring, early summer, I start to infuse a little bit of carbohydrates um, before some of my quality runs. But let's not get too far ahead of us. If we're talking about how to do this, start out just like you would a long run. Start out maybe with a 12 hour fast and do 45 minute run, see how you feel. Then increase to an hour, 75 minutes. So you're increasing your long run while you're also maybe increasing your fasted period of time. So you start out with 12 hours, then maybe go to 13, 14, 15, 16. The longer you go, the more your body is gonna 
burn off the carbohydrates and therefore leave you depleted, forcing you to tap into your fat reserves. And with that, one little trick I did yesterday is that after I ate, I did my cool impossible strength routine. That's a pretty, pretty intense, full body type of strength workout. Reason being is now I'm kind of doing a lot of anaerobic movements that really force my body to have to burn carbohydrates um, later that evening and overnight, which enhances the fasting effect. Okay, and just to be clear, during my run, I am taking in nothing. No calories, no hydration. The no hydration thing's more out of just, I, I don't really need it and has really nothing to do with the fasting component we're talking about today. However, hydration and electrolyte replacement is huge while fasting. So don't skimp on that. Your body releases a lot of electrolytes while you fast, so you need to keep that on high levels. So I will focus on that the rest of the day, which brings me to, okay, what do I do when I'm done? Like I mentioned, I'm finishing my run. I'll be 18 hours fasted, which then gives me a six hour eating window before I start to cycle over again. And what I love about fasting is now I can introduce all the macros, protein, fat, and carbohydrates. I don't have to eat keto like and keep myself in a fat burning state because research shows that intermittent fasting in this style mimics a lot of the benefits of keto. So now I can get carbohydrates to help me recover. I can get low glycemic carbohydrates to help me fuel maybe for a, a harder run tomorrow. Tomorrow I'm going to do a little bit more hills. So I want to be a little bit more loaded up. Okay. And that's what I love about fasting and not getting trapped into nutritional dogma where I can stay clean eating, low glycemic eating, but now I still reap the benefits of fat burning. I've got a a calorie drink replacement type of drink in the truck that I'll drink right after my run. And then I'm headed to the store and I'm going to load up on low glycemic carbohydrates to make a salad. I'll have a little bit of protein, a lot of raw vegetables, and a lot of fat in the form of olive oil and avocado. All right, like I mentioned, if you're interested in experimenting with this, start conservative. It's just like building a long run or building time in a natural shoe, is that it takes time for you to adapt. Start out 30 minutes, 45 minutes, see how you feel. And slowly, like I mentioned earlier, increase your time during your run and increase or extend the amount of time you're fasted for up to about 16 hours. All right, that's all I got for you today. Throw down those questions. Over and out from snowy, but beautiful Jackson Hole and Born to Run World. See you guys next time.